Okay, I hope you can hear me over all the various noises of the city. Um, I'm visiting my grandparents currently and also just visiting family in Punjab, but I wanted to talk about the book I'm reading, which is The Pisces by Melissa Broder. I'm reading it on my Kindle, obviously. I don't know why I brought this up with me, but um, I'm really enjoying it so far. So essentially, if you haven't heard, this is a booktube, you know, darling, but this is a book about a woman that is recently separated from a longtime partner and is sort of suffering from love addiction. So she moves in or is house sitting for her sister um, in California, I think along Venice Beach maybe, yeah. And she is dating, trying on different personas and finds this mysterious man by the ocean that's always swimming at night called Theo. And yeah, right now that's where I'm at. She's been on a few dates and things have gone great and not great, um, mostly not great, and she's sort of enamored with this man, she's going to therapy, all of that, but I'm really enjoying it, it's really funny, like, I, I heard it was funny, but I didn't expect for it to be, like, laugh out loud, like, I'm actually chuckling, reading this funny, um, just the things she says, like, the sentences are so, like, specific, and it sounds like, what you would say to your friends or i'm like i highly recommended this book to my best friend because i was like you have to read it it's hilarious and i feel like it's quite similar to the types of things that we would say to each other um like while talking uh so yeah really enjoying it we'll check back in probably once i'm back in billy um and let you know like how this book went Hello, I wanted to update you on what I've been reading, but I also have to get ready because I want to film my August wrap up. I have like an hour before we go bowling. Um, things have just been crazy because I move like across the world in two days. Wednesday night is my flight. Right now it's like Monday evening. Um, yeah, so I move across the world in like two days and as I've mentioned before, it was sort of like a whole situation with like a visa and like not knowing if I was going to move or like have to defer my, um, I'm moving for grad school. So I didn't know if I would have to defer to like the fall semester or whatever, but luckily I don't, um, so I'm moving. And because it was so last minute, I've been like running around trying to do everything, make sure I see everybody. Um, in like the last clips you probably saw, I went to Punjab visiting my grandma, um, so that was nice. Love her, she's such a cool gal. But that is to say like I haven't really had time to sit down and read much either like this month and even on the tail end of August. Um, but yesterday night while I was packing, I started listening to the audiobook for Carrie Soto is Back by Taylor Jenkins Reid and I really loved it. I gave it five stars. I think audiobooks are like the most consumable sort of like format for me. Um, I don't know something about like listening to something my brain just like doesn't know how to take a break. Um, it's just like so easy to keep listening so I yeah I finished the audiobook last night um, and for those of you who don't know Carrie Soto was a character in Malibu Rising, like a side character, supporting character, what have you. She is like a tennis player, the tennis player in fact, a very like well-renowned, very great record-breaking tennis player. And this book follows her post-retirement, like so she is in retirement due to a knee injury and also being like 30, which is pretty much like the max age for most athletes, especially in tennis but she holds the world record for the most number of grand slams so while she's in retirement this other young buck like is about to beat her record so she decides to come out of retirement and it's essentially about her career um sort of rising to the level of tennis that she was at and then also trying to make her comeback 
very moving. I gave this five stars. I think I mentioned that. Um, I gave this five stars and you know, like I think that I think that five stars mean different things for the books that like for different books, right? Like, is it the best writing, like the most beautiful use of language? No. But did I cry like for half the book? Absolutely. Like it was incredibly moving. I think very specific to me and the types of things that make me cry. I think I've mentioned this before, but like big tennis family, like I grew up playing tennis quite competitively um, until like I was like as a child. So that was like a big part of my childhood is like, you know, what she talked about, like going to practice every day after school or waking up super early and doing like a morning practice and then going to practice after school and like just like the investment in that lifestyle. And I found that really interesting also like the book focuses a lot on her relationship with her dad and anytime there's like a anything about like a dad being super supportive and like just being a good dad it always makes me cry um i love my dad we're like really close so yeah it, again like playing to me i'm the target audience for this book right um yeah and beyond that like i think it's really interesting what it says about like the idea of greatness chasing this you know fame or chasing immortality through breaking records, chasing immortality through being exceptional, the price that you pay for greatness. Um, and also talks a lot about like women in sports and the sort of misogyny that accompanies that, um, like occupying that space. Carrie Soto is prickly. She is not, you know, smile for the camera. She's not, uh, She's not like, what is the word? Like she's not PR friendly, I guess. Like she's not, she's called the, the battle axe because she's cold hearted. She's very calculated, very strategic. And that's why she's the best. Like she's arrogant. So they say like, she just knows she's amazing and she works really hard and all of those things. So like the ways that she's perceived and the like sort of pressures that she has to deal with in terms of her age and returning to the sport it's really interesting um again like a really well done audiobook as with i think a lot of taylor jenkins reads audiobooks it's like full cast even though it's mostly from carrie soda's perspective so um like not like full cast i guess but not really there's like sports announcers and they play the little jingle where it's like breaking sports news or whatever the fuck um yeah, and it's, it's good. I really enjoyed it. And that is my update. Still reading the Pisces, but not really finding the time to like sit down and read. But I really want to get back to it. I really miss it. So fun. So cool. Yeah, that's it. I'm going to finish getting ready and then quickly do my August wrap up. How have I talked for six minutes in this video? Like this clip? Doesn't make sense. Um, but yeah. from a super secret undisclosed location um also i'm like awkwardly squatting so if i move around that's why but i wanted to check in and tell you my thoughts about the pisces it's been a couple of days since i finished it i finished it on the plane ride a long plane ride um and yeah i just wanted to give you my thoughts it's been a minute so might not be as super coherent but I really enjoyed the book. I think I gave it four stars, maybe 4.5 stars. Um, it, if I didn't already summarize, is about a woman that is struggling with love addiction and being obsessive and crazy. That's fine. I'll tell mine you're gay. Um, picture to burn, homophobic version. But yeah, it's a woman that's struggling with being like obsessive and basically gets out of a long-term relationship and moves to her sister's house in Venice, California, a very like well-to-do sister that seems to have her shit together and is forced to go to group therapy with other women struggling with similar things, um, basically dating and trying to 
fill their lives with this love or looking for love in all the wrong places. Um, yeah, and like her encounters with these women, how she relates to them, how she sees herself and her madness in relation to them and where they are. Also, she goes for a walk on the beach one day and sees this swimmer swimming at night and quickly strikes up a relationship with him. Turns out he's a merman. Very weird, very strange, but um, definitely falls into that tradition of like weird, offbeat, like, mm, like women being strange and weird and crazy, but in a funny way. I think like a lot of times the books that focus on these topics can be quite dry, but this is like laugh out loud funny. Um, and yeah, I really enjoyed this. I think that I would recommend this book to a lot of people. I've recommended it to my best friend. I'm like really having a hard time like squatting the way that I am. I'm so sorry. I'm not built for this. Um, but yeah, I think that there were parts of the book that felt a bit repetitive. Maybe it was just like the environment that I was reading it in and trying to like, yeah, basically reading the last portion within like, you know, 12 hours altogether that made it feel so repetitive but yeah enjoyed it would recommend I don't think there was anything like too profound I got out of it but you know not every book has to do that enjoyed it had a great time and yeah we'll probably pick up more of Melissa Broder's writing because I like I said found the way that she talked very funny and like it spoke to me <laughs> okay yeah that's it I'm going to sign off because I need to stand up. This is so uncomfortable, but I'll see you again soon. Um, like, tell me what you think about this book. Tell me what you think about anything. I'll, yeah, see you again very soon. Bye.